Good morning, traders. This is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with your Midday Market Pulse update for Wednesday, November 4th. Okay, let's get started. So we got a big impulse higher, uh, gap higher this morning, right out of the gate. And we took it from uh, a close last night of 336. And we jumped all the way up here to uh, basically 342 and then back tested that uh, 341.50 which you'll recall was the top of this large trading range that we've been working in for weeks and weeks and weeks and SPY built on those gains and has come up to the 346 level where it is um, consolidating uh, just below resistance here. And so if we look at the 30 minute chart, you can see the detail uh, more clearly. We filled this gap, which was, you know, goes back to here. So uh, that is filled now and we are at the top of uh, gap uh, resistance. So a break above 346 will open the door to uh, this uh, 347 area and then potentially uh, uh, 349.50. Let me go back to the two hour. They were marked better. Here's that 349.50 level, uh, which would be resistance. And then, you know, after that, then potentially 354. Now, it stands to reason there's going to be some consolidation. Uh, we may get a pullback here to back test this breakout, back test the gap at 341.50, and that would be a very objective place to initiate a long with a stop just below the gap. And of course, if price enters that gap, then your target becomes the bottom of the gap uh, way down at 336.50. That's the trade that I detailed this morning in that pre-market note of the, you know, the extraordinary size of these gaps. At some point they'll be filled, you know, that could be way down the road or it could be this afternoon or tomorrow. We don't know, but it's something to certainly mark and be aware of. But right now, um, the impulse remains higher and we're at resistance. So, uh, here it is on the 30 minute just again. So, um, if you got long on this, you know, back touch of 341.50, then that was a, a great entry for you. Let's move ahead to the two hour on the cues. Uh, very much the same uh, scenario, if you will, big gap higher from 275 all the way up to 282. So that's a, uh, $7 gap. Uh, we came back to back test this 282. That would have been a great place to initiate a long. And now we've, uh, proceeded higher to this 287 resistance level. And if we were to break above here, there's not a lot of technical resistance to stop price from finding 293. So this, this 287 uh, is a critical level. So let's say you missed all this for whatever reason. You're out. You can get long against 287 with a stop just below and maybe, you know, this afternoon we finish, you know, strong. Maybe there's some announcements or whatever with the election. I think most of this is just a, a relief rally, if you will, in the sense that the VIX is off 20%, just like we talked about uh, heading into the event. So, and the tensions off. So 
that downward pressure has abated to a certain degree. And now, you know, the Bulls have the ball and it's up to them to, you know, hold the gains, consolidate and move higher. But this uh, 287 looks to be a really important level for the balance of the afternoon. And just like on SPY, would this level be rejected, then your downside targets would be 285 on a little pullback or a back touch of the original gap down here at 282. And remember, even with a back touch of 282, it's still a bullish setup. It's just a, you know, it's just a simple back test or a fib retracement. It doesn't mean, you know, it's all of a sudden some some big bearish scenario. It's, it, that wouldn't be the case. Let's look at the 30 minute chart. You can see this consolidation uh, right below this 287 level. And that, I mean, right now it's a bull flag, you know, up and then consolidate below resistance and then possibly pop it this afternoon and then open up to 289.50 or potentially uh, 293 as we just discussed. So keep that level in mind. And I think at this point it's, you know, put a little check on your psychology. Um, some people in the trading room were saying, you know, that they were mad that they had sold out of some of their stuff before the you know, before the event, and then of course it pops, and you know, that they missed this entry here, and then you know, now they're chasing it. Set all that stuff aside because that's you know, that's all backseat driving. Let that stuff go. You sold out yesterday because of the event risk, that's adhering to your process. Uh, you're a trader, not a dart thrower, and it's always easy to say, "Ah, oh, well, I should have kept it through earnings or the event and because it went higher. You wouldn't be saying that if we were down here. So if you miss this entry, forget about it. Decide what you're going to do right here at 287. Um, just to let you know what, what I did, is I have a, you know, a baby short right here and with a stop just above. And if the bulls, you know, take it and stop me out, that's fine. I'll get out of my position and then decide whether I want to go long or not. But it's an objective level. That's all I'm saying. It's objective to short while below and it's, it's objective to go long if it breaks out and that's all you can do as a trader is you know use your levels to your advantage and use them as you know benchmarks and pivots on on your future trades IWM now this one has been a little different the market is it's looking like the Republicans will hold the Senate. And I think what's happening here is that the odds of getting, you know, some blue wave, four or five trillion dollar infrastructure, COVID relief bill uh, were diminished. And so this one has had some trouble. Um, interest rates took a big drop, which has crushed KRE and some of these, you know, the bank names and some of these value cyclical trades. So this one is not up nearly as much as, you know, SPY and QQQ, more tied to the real economy. Um, and you can see there's been some very nice technical action. Went up and touched the gap, came back down and touch the gap below and now we're trying to make a gap entry right here at uh, 161.37 and if that gap can uh, you know be successfully entered and held 
then your target's going to be 163 at the top of the gap. You can see it here uh, more easily on the 30 minute chart. Uh, here was the, you know, the initial uh, drop lower to test this 158 top of the gap. It held, came back up, technical touch of the overhead gap, pulled back, and now it's making a, um, a little run to see if it can, um, you know, enter that gap and make a move to 163. Facebook. Big gap, big gap, 265 to, you know, 279. So that's a big gap. Um, but we had this level at 280 marked. So that was your, you know, you could have gotten long against 280. And now you've got a nice trade working after it uh, took out the prior highs here. Now you can move up your stops to say 284 and then you can stay long for a potential move higher. And then if it comes back and loses this, uh, this prior high, then your target would, would come back to uh, 280. Uh, but that was, uh, that was a, a, a really nice move. Apple. Um, gapped higher here and opened or at least came back and back touched this uh, 112 area and has gone up to fill this gap up to 115. So this gap here has been filled and the next time you see the chart it'll be removed. Now the key is 115. Really simple. Above 115 you can be long and look for a move towards 117, 118. But until and unless that resistance is taken out, it remains vulnerable for a pullback to 113, 112 at the top of this gap. So we're at a really interesting spot right here on Apple at 115. And you notice that here is this large volume over price bar noting that it's really the most important level on the chart as far as uh, volume over price resistance. And if it can clear, then you've got a nice long because this will become support then and you can look for you know higher prices towards 118, 120. And, uh, and beyond. Tesla um, had an initial move up to 435 and came back below this 430, which you know has been a pivot point for us for a long time. And it failed and it went right back to 420, which held so if you got long at 420, you're fine. You can look for a move back to 430. If you had, you know, had Tesla in the crosshairs this morning on that break of 430 was your short and you got a fast 10 bucks out of that. Uh, that trade was called out in the, in the trading room. I'm not sure uh, who may have taken it and who didn't, but Moving on to Microsoft, big gap higher, cleared this prior gap, jumped right above, back touched this 213, and has moved to 217, which was a predefined level. And so now a break above 217, for all intents and purposes, clears the way to 221.50. So if you had gotten long here, what you can do is, of course, uh, 
roll up your strikes, roll and protect, move up to 217 with a stop below, bank your profits, and then look for higher prices. Um, but I would like you to see, I would like to see you uh, roll up here or at least trail your stops to make sure, you know, on any fast pullback that you don't, you know, give up a lot of those profits. But uh, strong move, just like everything else, is right at key resistance. Amazon, gap higher to 31.50. That has been a key level the whole time. If you got long against it, great trade. Now we're up at 32.50. Um, there was also a second entry here on the break above 3200, which had been a level uh, that we had, have been flagging the whole time as well. But now we're at 32.50. Next level of overhead resistance. If it can clear, then you're looking towards 3300 uh, or this 3335 level up here. But, you know, if it gets turned back, then it would lo be logical to think that a back touch of either 3200 or all the way back to 3150 may be in the cards. So, very objective level here at 3250. Google's been a monster. Uh, gapped higher, took out the earnings high here at about 1680, and has just been running into uh, blue sky. So, this will be a much harder trade. I mean, from here on out, if you, you know, there's no. You're in blue sky territory. There is no overhead resistance. So stay long. If you're long, probably tough to, you know, if you're not in it, hard to, you know, hard to get in here. Uh, I would be putting on your fibs and look for a retracement, you know, a 38 or 50% retracement where you can then get long against a well-defined level. But as it stands right now, uh, really no trade to make. Netflix, reach up to the gap, turned away, kind of in no man's land right here. The trade I would be looking to make is keying off of 505. If it breaks above, great chance to go to 525 and fill that gap. That would be a nice $20 trade. Um, but here in no man's land, hard trade to make. If it comes up to 505 and is rejected, then you may have a chance at 495 coming back for a $10 trade. And certainly if it loses this 494 level, then it stands to reason coming back to 480 if there's uh, any kind of afternoon weakness, but uh, looks bullish right now. Um, we had marked semiconductors as something to watch. It, of course, gapped higher. I don't have this chart as well developed as the other ones, but just looking at this high volume over price bar here, coming up at 186, there should be a little resistance there. Um, but certainly supportive of higher prices in this uh, chart pattern. Solar ETF uh, got whacked. And I don't know if that's, you know, they're, they're saying the odds of a Biden victory are, are lower because it's, um, you know, so close and they're, you know, selling and asking questions later. I, I don't know the reasons why, but what I do know is there was a successful test of the 50 EMA, but price has got to get back above 67.50.
that was a pivot level that we identified yesterday. If you can get a break above, you know, a recapture of 67.50, you can take that long and look for 77.50. But as long as it stays below, you're in this void and, um, you know, vulnerable to that pullback we talked about last night to 57.50. So in the solar ETF, this 67.50 couldn't be more important. I mean, it's, it, it is the, it is the bull bear pivot. Uh, like solar, uh, pot stocks have taken a hit. Not, not big, 2%. It's not a big deal. But if, you know, if Biden were to secure a victory, you might see a pop here. Um, maybe, maybe the, Enthusiasm is tempered because uh, the Republicans uh, w looks like they'll still hold the Senate. So I don't know how that all pans out, but we were kind of looking for a you know a breakout here and didn't get it. So it's kind of in a new neutral posture. I don't know if there's really much to do here. XRT really nice technical setup here, I would want to buy a recapture of 53. We came up to touch it. That's our pivot. We talked about that yesterday. It's sitting at 52.50 now. So from a technical standpoint, the chart is still somewhat bearish. It lost the breakout. Break, breakout fail, back test to revisit the scene of the crime, if it can't clear 53, then you've got an objective short to come back down. But above 53, recapturing that breakout level, that's a nice objective long. So I'd like you to, uh, if you're interested in a trade, of course, set yourself an alarm just above 53 and if it can clear that, notice that price will have closed above all the moving averages. You got the 50, the 8, and the 20 would all be below 53 and price above. And that's that combined with a recapture of 53 would make that a nice long. Uh, bad day for the banks with the implosion of rates so they're down five percent gotta hold this 41 gotta hold the 200 at 40 50 to have any chance at all this may end up being a potential short if 41 fails and then it drops below the 200 if you know rates continue to collapse and it doesn't look like there's going to be any stimulus or anything like that until, you know, Q1 of next year. That may bring price down. But, you know, as it stands now, if you are bullish and you think that this is a one day wonder for rates. You've got an objective long here against the 200. If you were willing to take that, you know, that gamble. It's holding the breakout above 41. So if you were to take a long here against 41 or the 200, that's a, a nice objective entry. And then, you know, if stimulus happens or this rush back into value were to happen, you would be uh, sitting pretty here with that entry with a lot of upside potential and if you're wrong you take the paper cut and move on a uh, big day for housing up four percent right here at this uh, 57 level very much the same setup as retail had a breakout 
failed, came back for a potential double bottom here at the September lows. Big bounce if it can recapture this breakout level uh, just above 57 then you would have a nice long objective long entry here and then look for new highs. Um, so this is, you know, the opposite of the bank trade, lower interest rates, helping housing, getting a bounce, whereas for the banks, it's, it, it's the opposite. Uh, kind of hard to see this chart, but this is TLT. And TLT is up $4, 2.5%. That's a big move on TLT. But it has jumped back into this trading range. And then, uh, you know, it was a false breakdown below the 200. And then with the uh, collapse in uh, rates is a positive for TLT. So back up into the box on that trade. Uh, gold not doing anything at all. Uh, you should have an alarm at 180 for a potential breakout. I think that's the uh, bull bear pivot that we want to stay focused on. So that's a, that's a run through the indexes where we're at. We're we're at key resistance. Of course, something could have happened while I'm doing the doing the um, uh, video, but. Just remember, check your psychology. Uh, a good trader's got to forget about the mistakes and focus on the next objective trade. So, um, you know, there's still money to be made, you know, intraday. I think it's a little early to be taking, you know, long-term uh, duration trades. Although the VIX has come down a lot, um, I don't think we've we've breached the levels of you know pile in max long any kind of any kind of a trade like that. But there's certainly enough vol that if you're you know at your desk in front of your trade station, you can take some clean shots against some of these levels and do very well. And if you're wrong, you know. Quickly get out, take your paper cut, and then reload. Um, in this volatile environment, um, prices will continue to move this afternoon. And remember some of those trading ideas that we had, trade half size. That's fine. I mean, there's still a lot of news out there left to go as some of these states get called. Uh, we've got Powell tomorrow. Uh, we've got the jobs report Friday. So there's still news out there. And uh, you don't want to be on the wrong side of a news bar that goes against your position, you know, when you've got a, you know, obviously a, a big position on. Uh, trade light. Um, trade at your comfort level. Uh, you don't have to be a hero. You just have to make good objective trades that you're comfortable with. And uh, I want to thank a couple people that sent me uh, nice notes overnight and then this morning on the, uh, the levels that we had identified yesterday. They said that they were really helpful and uh, helped help set them up with some nice trades this morning. So I'm glad... Uh, I'm glad you let me know. It's always nice to hear. And I'm uh, uh, happier that, that the levels helped you uh, find some success this morning. I have a lot of confidence in my levels. Uh, I want you to lean on them and focus simply on your execution, on setting your stops, setting your targets, executing nice, low-risk objective trades. And if you do that, I think uh, I think you're going to do really, really well. So if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button if you like the content and the alarm bell so you get notified. Also in the show notes are convenient links to the blog site and how to register for all my content to get 
uh, emails sent to you each and every time I publish new content. And of course, when you subscribe to the content, you'll get an invite to our trading room. Uh, we've got a nice little community started, some really sharp traders in there. And uh, at the very least, you'll expand your trading network. And uh, that's always a good thing. So have a good rest of your afternoon. If I see anything, I'll, I'll shoot a note out. But I think the stage is set for what's going to happen this afternoon. Uh, we'll just have to see if they want to pull it back a little bit or they want to take it higher. So this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Have a good afternoon of trading and talk to you next time.